Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, I'd like to prove one of the most famous formulas in all of mathematics, Euler's formula, and I'll use it to do Euler's identity at the very end. So, we start by using the power series expansion for e to the x. So if you've been in Calc 2, we know that e to the x has a power series representation known as this. So the pattern goes 1 over 0 factorial, x to the first over 1 factorial, x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial, x to the fourth over 4 factorial, and on and on and on. Let's see what happens. Instead of e to the x, I'm going to substitute e to the ix. I'm going to substitute i. And remember, that's where um, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, that imaginary number. Well, that 1 would stay the same. But then I would have plus, not x, but ix over 1 factorial, plus ix squared over 2 factorial, plus ix cubed over 3 factorial. Maybe I'll do one more, plus ix over 4 factorial, 4, and on forever. Now, if I start simplifying this, um, Well, I can't do much with the ix over 1 factorial, but i squared, i squared is negative 1, so this is actually minus x squared over 2 factorial, plus, well, i cubed, well, i cubed is negative i, because i squared would give me the negative 1, times an additional i. So that'd be negative ix over 3 factorial, and the x would be cubed. And then i to the fourth, well, that's like i squared times i squared. That's just going to be a plus 1 x to the fourth over 4 factorial. And what you could see is you could see that this very pattern I've just written will repeat. The next one is going to be well, it would be i to the fifth, which is just 1 times i. So that would be plus i times x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And the next one would be negative. And I could do this all day long. But what we want to recognize is the pattern. And here's what I do next. I group the first one. The first group is going to be without the i's, so I'm going to start with the 1, and then I'll take the next term without i's, which is minus x squared over 2 factorial. Then I'd have plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. The next one would be minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial. I'm going to group, I'm going to group those terms together. And then I'm also going to group the terms with the i's together. So the first one with an i is just x over 1 factorial. The next was minus x cubed over 3 factorial. Then it was plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And those all had an i, so I'm just going to factor that i out front. And now here's where the magic happens. This first grouping is actually the power series representation for cosine. And this power series, this representation is for sine. It's amazing, right? So if you've seen those things in Calc 2, what I have is two different power series representations. So I'm just going to replace this first grouping by cosine x. And then I've got plus i, I'll replace this grouping with sine x. And there you have it. There is Euler's formula. Incredible amounts of application, especially in complex numbers, but also in differential equations. So you'll, you need to use this in case you want to solve second order homogeneous differential equations with imaginary numbers of the characteristic equation. And then just for fun, 
uh, I'll plug in pi for x, e to the i pi, really famous. That would be cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. Well, sine of pi is zero, and cosine of pi is negative one. And if I add that negative one to the other side, that would be e to the i pi plus one is equal to zero. One of the most famous identities in all mathematics, it uses the five most important constants in math, e, i, pi, one, and zero, all in one nice, neat little equation. What more could you ask for? If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe, and have a fantastic day. Bye.